Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> Another video. And so this is going to be a bit of a different video. Why is this going to be different? Okay. So, <laughs> I have thought about doing this video for a really long time. And when I get into it, you're going to understand why you'll probably understand why just simply by the title. Um, so I joke, I joke a lot, um, in a lot of my past videos that, you know, I, I used to have the thumbs down brigade, you know, people that would just come on and, uh, click thumbs down on my video and then, you know, done, move on, you know, <laughs> not, you know, these are people that are not fans of me that don't care for my channel or the topics or the content I put out. So, you know, I would joke about that. So over time, <laughs> uh, I have gotten messages. I've gotten a combination of really sweet, kind messages, and I've also gotten some hate messages, or as I would like to call them, my fan club. <laughs> Jokingly, I say fan club because they're not at all. They're not fans at all. They feel there are a certain group of people, and they're not people I know that I'm aware of. They, they could be people that I know that I just use a different account. I know that happens in order to message me either on Facebook Messenger or um, through Instagram. So it's not like a true name. Um, however, one person in particular has, and that was from a name, um, that messaged me on Messenger. I have a hair. <laughs> I can feel it. I'm um, sorry. But um, that was open about just disliking me so much. And uh, so... Those messages sparked me to think about like, you know, body positivity, right? We're trying to put out there that we want to be accepting and we want to be body, body positive of ourselves, but also other people around us. And so this is what I've thought about why I should make this video for a long time, because I, there's, there's nothing, I'm quite an open book. I want to say, do I share everything that I have going on online in, in videos with people? No, because most of the time I don't think people want to hear about my crap. Nobody wants to hear about my day-to-day -day stuff. Nobody needs to hear about, like I mentioned, I work out a lot. You know, you guys know that. But I don't really get into things, uh, mainly because, like I said, people don't don't care. But lately, I've been getting a lot of, a lot of really kind messages, but also some more hate. <laughs> I giggle and I laugh about it because once upon a time in my younger years, you know, I'm approaching 50. I'm creeping up on 50. I'm 48 years old. So... In my younger years, I used to really take in what people thought of me. Critically, I, I felt it was harsh. It made me feel bad if someone's opinion of me wasn't, you know, what I thought it should be. Um, or if they just said something mean to me about my physical appearance, it would really linger with me. It would sit with me and it would eat away at me and bother me. I lost that feeling over people's opinions of me a long time ago. Um, does it still hurt occasionally when someone is cruel or mean or says something really awful about how you look. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I'm human and I struggle with those things, but I am learning that I am going to be an open person because I'm of an age where I have to accept myself as is or make changes to my body. So this video is going to be me sharing. I'm going to, you know, spill the beans on work I've had done to my body. And I think that it's important, and this may be very triggering to some people. And if it is, I apologize, because I know there are a lot of uh, strong opinions, either pro or against having worked onto your body in any way, shape or form. And I wanna first say that I respect if you have an opinion of absolutely against it, you don't believe in it, you think it's, terrible, whatever, I respect that you have that opinion. However, you also have to respect that there are a lot of us out there that will fight the aging <laughs> that happens in our bodies because, you know, we, we want to look and feel good for as long as possible. And that's kind of the mentality that I take. You know, I try to do most everything as naturally as possible such as working out. Like if there's if there are things about my body that I can change through working out and, you know, doing it that way, absolutely I do that. I work out very hard, but there are certain things about our bodies we cannot change no matter how much we work out. <laughs> Let's face it. Um 
And same with our faces. Okay. This is going to be the big controversial one. So I'm, I've gotten uh, a couple of really awful, <laughs> mean messages, uh, basically ridiculing me for having a Botox filled face. <laughs> so I figured this is a good way to set the record straight. What have I really had done to my face? I tried Botox once in my forehead and it's not even that I needed it. I, it someone said, oh, you should try Botox sometime. And this was a while ago. It was probably over a year ago that I tried Botox. Didn't like it. Didn't need it. Didn't like how it felt. So will I get Botox again in the future? Perhaps if I need it, you know, Botox is, it paralyzes the muscles. So it takes away the wrinkles. So it basically you can't frown, you can't move your eyebrows around and you know, there, you lose expression, especially if you get it in your forehead. I like to be expressive. <laughs> so Botox really wasn't for me. However, I have so many friends and just people that I know that get Botox regularly because it's a very common thing. Like most people I know at a certain age start getting it. Um, and I'm all for it, you know, do what makes you happy. I didn't care for Botox. I didn't, I didn't like the feeling of not having movement in my, my forehead, honestly. Um, but so no, I don't have a Botox filled face. There is no Botox in this face. However, the one thing I did have done, um, is that I did get lip filler, uh, as, if, if you go back to my early videos of where I have shown my face, you can tell that I do not have full lips. It's something I've always wanted. And I also think that having fuller lips softens um, the aging, I think. It just it looks a little more feminine. And I've never, it's just, you, I have the same lips that my both my brothers have. We do not have full plump lips. And I've always wanted it. So I'm like, heck, why not? Um, but that is truly the only thing that's um, been changed on my face other than I had my, my eyebrows microbladed a few years ago. Um, and I haven't had them done since. Uh, so I've just kind of let them do their thing. And I don't know if I'll do it again. I don't know. It depends how I feel, you know, still some of the shading is there. So it just, it helps me frame my face a little bit better because I have such dark hair. And you know, as you get older, you you lose hair on your face and your eyebrows are one of them. So I like to have defined eyebrows. However, most of it has like faded away because it's not permanent. Even though tattooing is technically permanent, the microblading is not um, for whatever reason. I don't know. But so that's that's the truth of it. I have not had any work done. I have not had a facelift. Somebody sent a message that looked like I had had a facelift done. I'll take that as a compliment. There's nothing wrong with it. In the future, will I have a facelift done if I need it? Probably if I have the money to do it, why not? You know, um, but I really do. I try to just take care of my skin. I, I am not a sun worshiper anymore. I was for a very brief period of time when I was younger. And then I started seeing a dermatologist because I had very acne filled skin um, as a teenager, as a young adult. And I learned quite early what the effects of sun would do to my face. And I, and same with my neck, like I'm, so I'm very, I'm very white and pale. <laughs> People joke about that. Um, because I take very good care of my, my skin. I, you know, I, I protect it. So I think I've just that in genetics. I, you know, I, I luckily haven't aged as much, but I'll take that as a compliment, you know? I, I think that I'm never going to be happy with how I look. I think that that's just something within me. And my closest friends will, will tell you, yep, that's just, that's how she is. I'm very self-conscious. Um, I, you know, I don't have the best body image of myself. No matter how much I work out, no matter how hard I try to, you know, embrace I am who I am, um, it's very difficult for me. And I think that part of it is because if you ever went through someone picking on you or if you were bullied when you were younger or like, you know, for me, I was a very late bloomer, uh, as a teenager. And I had two older brothers that had their buddies hanging around all the time that were, you know, not always so kind to me. Right. So you just, you, the experiences that you have in life shape you as an adult and they, you carry them through life with you. And one of them for me is, having a, a not so great image of myself. And so I am, I guess that's probably why I'm so for 
you know, men and women, any, it doesn't matter what gender you are, but doing what makes you feel good about your body. And if that means you want to go get Botox or go get lip filler, then I am absolutely for it. And I am super supportive of people just doing what makes them feel good. Um, so the other thing that I will share with you, <laughs> since I'm talking about things I've had done to my body procedures or, you know, whatever, um, I have had a breast augmentation. Not many people know that about me and it's not anything new. Uh, I think it was like, I think I've had them about 16 years now, long time. Um, and for me, really just being completely, you know, transparent and honest, like I was, I was not born with, you know, a big chest. I, and I've worked out my whole life. So the first thing that you lose when you lose fat for most women is through the chest area. So when you start off with none, none to begin with, I was very flat chested, you know, and, and then after having two babies, um, attempting to breastfeed and go through all of that, um, I did it successfully, but it was just, you know, it, they never got big, <laughs> not even when I breastfed. And so, you know, I decided after I knew I was not planning on having any more children that I would, I would have, you know, augmentation done. And it was one of the best things I could have done for myself because it was something I was so very self-conscious about more than anything. Like growing up, like my brothers picked on me for being flat chested. If you have brothers, they're brutal. Um, and so it was something that I changed for myself. Any of the things I've ever contemplated doing or have had done, I always did them for myself, never for anybody else. Nobody else wanted me to do it. It was something that I wanted to do to make myself feel good. And I will have to say that having the augmentation done was one of the best things I could have done for myself because during that process, I also went in for my first baseline mammogram because my surgeon wanted to get a baseline prior to the implants so that you could, you know, just make sure everything was good. And I ended up having to have um, two biopsies done, one in, one in each breast. And so that started a very scary journey for me and a very scary time of having a breast cancer scare. Fortunately, thank goodness, the, it turned out fine. It was not cancerous. It was, you know, it was fine, but it almost was a blessing in disguise, even though it was the most scary time in my life, it forced me to go get my first mammogram at a much younger age. And had I waited, um, it would have just been so much more stressful later on. But now I know that, you know, and they track and they can keep track of a lot easier now. Um, so it ended up being like a blessing, you know, um, I can tell you that also my family was not super supportive of me getting that, getting the augmentation done. So that also has a little bit of a stigma attached to it. Um, I think my mom's like, you're fine. You're perfect the way you are, as moms do. You know, she loves me and, you know, thinks I'm perfect just the way I am. And that's wonderful to have that support. Um, even my partner, who I'm still with, uh, he did not want me to have it done. <laughs> so bought and paid for myself. Anything I've ever had done, I've nobody has ever paid for because that's also another stigma attached to, oh, did you get a boyfriend to pay for your boobs type of thing. Um, but no, I they're bought and paid for by me because I wanted them. And I am very happy that I did that for myself because that helped my boost my confidence more than anything else. Um, and I don't any longer have that... Uh, insecurity. And I wasn't insecure about my lips by any means. It's not why I had the injections done. Um, however, I, I like having fuller, more plump lips now as I'm getting older. And so, you know, it's to each their own. We, we need to accept people for what they want to be, right? Like if you truly are accepting of, you know, body positivity that people keep putting out there, then if someone thinks that they want to go get some Botox or go get lip filler, then we must be supportive of that. Or don't say anything. Like, you know, I'm a firm believer. If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. You don't, I mean, you don't have to weigh in and, and make someone feel bad. So people that purposely message me in which it, the purpose is to make me feel bad, it's not going to work. <laughs> because at this point in time, I'm comfortable enough with the things that I have done. Um, 
and who I am as a human being, as a person, and you know, someone messaging me or saying something mean about me at this stage in my life, I've learned to just let it roll off my back. It has a, very little to do with me and very much to do with that person who sends the message. But um, I, I'd rather be transparent and put it out there, you know? Secret is debunked, right? You know, what has Kelly had done? Has she had a facelift? No, no, I have not. <laughs> I, would, I would admit it if I did, but I have not. But maybe in the future I will. You never know, guys. I think that um, just being supportive of just everybody that you come in contact with, you know, and if, if you come across a video where someone really triggers you and you don't like how they look or you're very bothered by their personality, click off of it. Like you don't have to like then go message that person. Seek them out. <laughs> Here's the funny thing is that you have to seek these people out. And if you go over to Instagram, it's easier because I have a link to my Instagram. So I get people find me there. But finding me on Facebook and knowing my first and last name, that takes a little bit of work and effort. And I don't know why someone would put effort towards somebody that they don't like. <laughs> so it's kind of baffling to me that people spend that amount of time being concerned about somebody else's life, I guess. I don't know. It's very, it's very odd to me because I don't, I don't put effort into people I don't care for. I just click off and I move on, you know? So I don't know. I think that it's just good to be, you know, I try to be inclusive on my channel. I don't want to turn anybody away. And if you have an opinion, that's fine. You are entitled to feel however you want to feel about what I've shared with you today. Um, all I ask is that people be respectful. That's the bottom line with anything that I share online. Yes, I put myself out there. Yes, I put it on a public platform. However, you know, I was raised with manners. So if I don't have anything nice to say or I feel a certain type of way about something, I am not going to put my and project my feelings onto somebody else because it's just, it's, it's my feelings you know, what people feel and when they feel triggered, it's something within them. It has nothing to do with us that are sharing the information. So there's nothing I can do about how someone else feels about what I might have done. Um, it's just, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, that's something they have to work out. Um, but if it bothers them to the extent that they just want to attack, 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 then you need to click off and, you know, maybe revisit why you're feeling such a way about it. Um, but I know that I'm not for everybody and that's okay. None of us are for everybody. We're not gonna be liked by everybody. Let's, let's, I'll bring it back to that part and wrap this up. Um, I get that we all have differing opinions about different things. We all may feel strongly about certain things such as having work done, <laughs> plastic surgery, whatever, changing your body in any way, shape or form. Um, how, the key is, is that you can have your opinion, but you don't necessarily have to share it publicly when someone is, you know, like previous to this, I hadn't talked about it. And, you know, people are very curious. I, you know, like I said, I'll take it as a compliment, I suppose. Um, however, be respectful. Be respectful that it's it's your own choice to feel how you want to feel. It's your own choice. It's your body. You make the decisions for your body and you should respect someone else's choices, I guess is what I want to say. Um, and even though we do put ourselves out there by coming on publicly and sharing with you guys, I didn't do it because I want the whole world to know. I don't want the whole world to know necessarily. <laughs> But I do think that being transparent and open and I'm not ashamed of anything that I've had done. So I, you know, I think of you guys out there as my people, you know, you come and visit my channel. Um, most of you are very, very supportive and very kind and sweet. And I appreciate that. So I'm happy to share my experience with people if it helps somebody think that, okay, so this is destigmatized, you know, and maybe I'll get something done. Just know that, you know, I'm all for I am an enabler in many ways, right down to dolls, dolly things, work being done. If you want plastic surgery, go get it. If you can afford it and you want it, do it and it's safe. You know, I'm all for it. I just think that, you know, whatever makes us feel better is a great thing, you know, and yeah, I, I just, I'm happy to share it. Like I said, for those out there that think that I'm ashamed or been trying to like hide that I've had some work done, I'm not. 
I'm very proud of the fact that I, you know, I work out hard to stay in shape, be healthy, and if I do a couple of things on the side that make me feel good about how I look, then I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm open about it, you know? <laughs> it's what it is. But hopefully you guys aren't too triggered by this. If you are, I apologize. It's not meant to be. It's just me sharing and also hopefully destigmatizing, you know, how things like this are viewed. I think it's more normal now for, especially for women, you know, it's a whole thing, right? You know, men can grow old gracefully. You know, it's also like coloring your hair. Like, I color my hair. Clearly, I have gray hair that grows in. I color my hair, <laughs> you know? I want to look young still. And society makes women feel like, you know, it's unacceptable to age gracefully. And I'm just not one that won't fight that, I suppose. At some point in time, I may embrace the gray hair and allowing things to settle. You know, I haven't needed to have... A bunch of stuff done but we'll see how I feel in the next 5, 10, 20 years if I'm lucky enough to stay on this earth long enough. <laughs> but anyways guys, okay I'm going to stop rambling. Hopefully you guys, I don't know if enjoyed the video would be the word to the way to describe this but at least maybe you see my perspective and hopefully if you've been body shamed understand that I have as well. It doesn't feel good, um, but just remember that it's it has to do with that person shaming you, not you, and it's a it's a problem within them, and you that's nothing you can do about that. But just try to love yourself, and that's what I've been trying to do my whole life, and I'm slowly getting there, guys. But I am human, and I am my worst critic, unfortunately. So, anyways, happy almost Friday. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm surprised I was able to squeeze in the videos I have been this week, but I'm going to try to do more even though I'm crazy busy. But anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of your day and you will see me very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.